Hello and welcome everybody. I see some people are still connecting to audio, so we'll just give it a, a quick second here to let everybody kind of settle in and be present before we get going. Nice to see you today, or see your your names here. Uh, with It's nice to have you with us here in Zoom um, for this next edition of the Visions of Wellness series with Tanisha Samuel. And I see that everybody's connected to audio now, so I'll, I'll get going with our announcements at the beginning. Thank you for joining us today. The workshop will begin in just a few moments. The Border Crossings Project, presented by the Art Gallery of Mississauga, is generously funded by the Ontario Trillium Foundation through the GROW Grant, the Ontario Arts Council, and the City of Mississauga's Cultural Division. Borders are challenges faced physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. They can both connect and divide, shared by the art of storytelling. Recognizing and sharing these border crossings allows us to understand ourselves and others differently. Instead of groups of people separated by arbitrary distinctions, we are all individuals who experience pivotal moments of change that shape the contours of the narrative of our lives. Come and explore these stories with us. Before we begin, we do want to acknowledge that the land on which we gather and which the region of Peel operates is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land. In particular, in particular we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabeg, the Wendat people, the Haudenosaunee, and the Ojibwe Chippewa peoples. The land that is home to the Métis and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land, and by doing so, give our respect to its first inhabitants. We continue to respect this land as we move forward with today's workshop. This workshop is being recorded so that we can post it to YouTube for anybody who can't attend. I'm going to launch a poll for a minute, and if you don't mind, uh, please do answer so we can know uh, who we're serving today and where you're all tuning in from. And what that means is I get to hand it over and I'll just quickly introduce our facilitator for today. I'm very pleased to introduce Tanisha, who is a visionary and proudly transformation, transformational and intersectional leader. Their current work focuses on freelance diversity, equity and inclusion consulting and advocating for mental health support for the community's most vulnerable. Tanisha is an active board member with the Black Mental Health Canada and Moyo Health and Community Services. And now to hear from them themselves, Tanisha. <laughs> Thank you so much for the warm welcome, Daniel. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to the third installment of uh, the Visions of Wellness course. Um, this is a curriculum that I've uh, been incubating for about four months now, and the Art Gallery of Mississauga has just been so generous in allowing me to uh, test I out can't this. See your image. Uh, Sorry, I can't see you. No, oh, you can't can see me. You. No, we can't see you. Oh, yeah, let me we just can. Check here. Brilliant. How about now? Now we can. Thank you. Now you can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what happened there, but here I am. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, as I was mentioning, I'm, I'm so proud to be here to to um, deliver this curriculum and and just to offer some tangible resources and tools that people uh, can apply to their very own lives in order to achieve wellness, to vision wellness for themselves, and also to embody wellness. Um, as um, uh, Daniel had mentioned, um, I. Uh, um, work pretty closely within the mental health community, specifically with racialized communities. Um, I do sit on the board of directors for Black Mental Health Canada and uh, Moyo Health and Community Services. And we've been running educational health promotion programs um, throughout the pandemic, just because we've noticed that these communities, specifically racialized communities, um, also given the civil events of this year have just been the hardest hit when it comes to mental health to 
tools. And so as an artist myself in my own personal life, I thought, you know, like how can we bring tangible tools to the community um, that sort of takes, um, you know, the attention, the, the pressure and the stress away from the, the issues at hand and kind of allows us a healthy way to channel the energy and, um, you know, bring some awareness, awareness, uh, some mindfulness to our present moment and to um, heal ourselves um, in a way that is uh, healthy for us and that is adaptive for us and progressive for us. And so for me uh, personally, myself in my own health journey, um, uh, art has been that modality for me that has um, really helped me to channel energy, uh, channel negativity and, and use it in a constructive way to either have a dialogue with it, to have some self inquiry, um, um, you know, interplay with all of that energy and to share it in a way with other people um, that, um, you know, inspires them to do the same with um, their own challenges um, in their mental health journey. And so I hope you find some benefit from our class today. Um, over the past three sessions, we have been uh, talking quite a bit about uh, wellness recovery action planning. And this is is the evidence-based approach that um, I, I teach using the modality of art um, in order to teach ourselves and to embody um, the joy that we're, we're seeking, the, the wellness that we're seeking. And so we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what we've been discussing in the past couple of weeks, uh, or sorry, the past three, three months or so. And then we'll get into actually creating today. I wanted today to be a, a very much a working session. Um, I know the first couple of sessions, um, it, they were an hour long, and um, some folks felt like they didn't have enough time to really dive into their art practice. And so we've decided to extend um, these, the session to an hour and a half today, just to give folks more time to ease into their practice, and to really get some time in for self reflection, because that is how this modality works. That's how art works. That's how wellness recovery planning works. You need that time to really dive in deeply into yourself and really come up with answers that tell the truth of what you're experiencing and then also, um, you know, project some useful tools and solutions that you can implement and, and using art to um, uh, bring some, some um, added and therapeutic benefits to your own personal experience. So just to um, begin today's session, um, I wanted to just open it up to the floor to see if anyone here is returning from the past um, two sessions that we've had um, back in June and May. Um, anyone who, who's been here before, put your hand up. I kind of just want to take a look to see who's here, who's returning, who's new. If you're returning, uh, put your hand up. I just want to have a look see to see who's, who's coming back. We do have one coming in from the chat. Sherry says, I am. And I awesome. Welcome well. back, Sherry. Yes, and Sherry's been here since the very beginning, um, I guess, uh, enjoying the courses uh, and um, applying it to uh, her own life, too. So welcome back, Sherry. I know she's been doing quite a bit of amazing work and has um, uh, received a lot of progress, too, from this course. So thanks so much for coming back. But it looks like we've got some newbies who are joining this session. That's totally cool as well. Um, not to worry, um, you know, the material isn't, you know, strictly cumulative or snowball-y that um, you're going to miss out on things that um, you can practice today. So today is going to be a working session. We're really going to just apply what we've learned in theory up until now. And we're going to have a working day, basically. So before we dive right into our working practice, what I like to do myself as an artist personally is do a little bit of mindfulness work, a little bit of mind-body connection in order to still the body, bring some focus and awareness, bring some concentration, and sort of prepare myself for what I'm about to do. Um, when I create art, art is a very reflective and a very therapeutic process for me. 
me. And so when I'm going through the process of using my materials, my paints, my inks, my pens, or just journaling, uh, I'm really I'm really going into the act of processing um, things that are going on inside of me internally. So that could include inner dialogue. It could include the self-talk, the conversations that are happening in my head. And so before we do this work, before we, we get into that, it's really important to just ease ourselves into it because sometimes it can be intense, especially if you're in a position in your life where you are handling some really heavy emotional stuff. Um, if you are in um, a place in your life where maybe you're dealing with a diagnosis, um, perhaps depression, anxiety, PTSD, CPTSD, uh, and other um, um, experiences within your mental health journey. Um, this is a time for you to really be gentle with yourself in this time in your life. And so before we do that self-reflective work, it's really important to just settle down, calm our breathing, calm ourselves, sort of tune our nervous systems for the work that we're about to do. And so I like to do that personally with um, breathing practices and meditation. Um, I practice meditation on a daily basis. I'm a certified meditation teacher and I have traveled um, across Thailand to learn um, the study of Vipassana meditation. Um, now it's not necessarily a religious practice. It's quite secular, actually, when you really study it in depth. And it's really just um, the mindfulness of your breathing, putting your focus and your attention on your breathing, on the inhalation and on the exhalation. And all you're doing throughout your seated meditation practice is being aware, noting the inhale, noting the exhale of your breathing, following the motion of the inhale and the exhale, following the sensation of the breath underneath the tip of the nose on the upper lip and as it releases from the body. That is your focus of attention when you're doing Vipassana meditation. That's that's my style of breathing meditation. You don't have to you know, follow in that particular tradition. That is just a tradition that I happen to love and I've um, you know, fallen into in my own journey. Um, but um, I wanna guide us together in a practice where we experience some mindfulness of breathing so that we can begin to tune our nervous systems for the practice that we're about to do, the investigative work on ourselves psyches and emotions through the practice of art. So wherever you are right now, I invite you to come to stillness, come to a comfortable seated position, wherever you are, you can even lie down if you wish, um, you know, make yourself as comfortable as possible in whatever position that means right now, whatever your body is asking you to do, you know, do that at this moment. If your body is saying, you know what, I just need to lean on something or I need to lie down or lie back for a second or I need to just sit on the floor cross-legged. Do that now. Be, be honorable to your body and um, just receive the information that it's giving to you. It's talking to you right now. So give it what it needs in order to relax and come to presence. So wherever you are, come to a comfortable seated position, lying position or a reclining position. I invite you to be tall and straight in your posture. If you are seated, stack your shoulders directly above the hips, above the tailbone. And I invite you to close the eyes right now. Bring your attention, bring your awareness to all of the inner activity that's happening to the mind, to your spirit, to your soul, whatever you want to call it, to your internal universe, wherever the deepest parts of you are, that's where we're going at this moment. So closing the eyes, keeping your posture tall and straight, bring your attention, your focus, your awareness to that internal play, that inner world. You're safe right now, you are secure right now, you're in a place where you can receive support and healing. Bring your attention to your breath to the inhale and to the exhale of your breath. Become aware of your breath. You are now becoming a channel for breath 
to come through, through your inhale and through your exhale. You can bring your attention to the tip of your nose or the upper lip if that is uh, something that helps you find concentration on the breath, but see, sense, feel, taste, touch within your internal world. We're not paying attention to the things around us or the things that are external to the body just yet. We're just paying attention to the breath, being mindful, being aware of our inhalation of oxygen, of the exhalation of that carbon dioxide, of that waste respiratory product that our body no longer needs. Inhale deeply and exhale completely. Everyone's doing great. Stay comfortable wherever you are, keeping your posture tall and straight. If you're sitting, keeping your shoulders stacked proudly above the waist, above the tailbone, above the hips. If you're lying down, relax the shoulders, relax the face, relax the jaw, relax. Relax, relax, and settle into your breath. Settle into your awareness. Settle into your present moment. You're doing great. Inhaling deeply. And exhaling completely. And as you settle into your practice, as you begin to focus on the internal play within you. Certain thoughts may come up, certain agenda items, to-do lists, thoughts of a friend, thoughts of things you may have to do, things that are not complete just yet. They may run through your mind and that is perfectly normal. That is the mind doing exactly what it functions to do, to think. And so as your mind is doing that, as you're thinking, just label those thoughts that come and go as thinking. And repeat to yourself internally through, through your mind, within your mind, thinking, thinking, thinking. Just label it, don't attach yourself to any particular thought in mind. Just let it go, let the thoughts come and go and label them thinking, just thinking. Simple thinking. Inhaling deeply and exhaling completely. And as you sit tall and straight, or as you recline in your position, you may hear something external in the world, maybe the pitter patter of your cat, maybe the voices of someone else in the home talking, maybe a bus driving by. If you hear something external to you and it wants to grab your attention, just label it, hearing, hearing, hearing. And repeat those words to yourself internally, hearing, hearing, hearing. And continue on with your breath, inhaling deeply, exhaling completely. So as you sit, as you settle into your breath, should you ever find a distraction that comes to you from the five senses, just label it as it is. Label it for what it is. It could be hearing. It could be thinking, it could be seeing. Label it for what it is and allow it to pass with your inhale, with your exhale. Everybody's doing great.
And for those of us who are just joining us, we're in the midst of a guided seated meditation practice. I invite you to come into a comfortable seated or reclining position, sitting up tall and straight or resting, allowing your body to get what it needs today. Fall into your inhale and your exhale. We're just about to take our seated breathing practice a little bit deeper. We're going to focus a little bit more on the inhale and the exhale. And we'll do that by making mental notes of these movements of our bodies, of our respiratory system. So as you inhale, just say to yourself internally, rising. As the chest rises, as the belly rises while you breathe, as the chest expands, as the shoulders expand, as you breathe, say rising to yourself. And as you exhale, as the lungs collapse, as the chest shrinks, as the navel presses up against the spine and you expel all of the stale air from the lungs, and the chest falls, say to yourself, falling, rising with the chest as you inhale, and falling as you exhale, as the chest falls, as the air releases from the lungs, everyone's doing great. Rising and falling. Moving along with your breath, making those mental notes. Staying in line, in tune, in awareness in focus of the breath alone. And as you journey on with your long and deep breath, your deep inhale and your complete exhale, the mind is going to do what it does and it's gonna come up with something wild and crazy and try to grab your attention. Not to worry, that's the mind doing what it does. Just label it for what it is, just thinking, thinking, thinking. And then release it with your breath, falling, exhale, falling. Let the thoughts go with your breath. Let the thoughts stream on by with your breath, rising and falling, rising and falling. And once again, you may come across a sensory, sensory distraction, maybe a mosquito lands on your hand. Oh, how distracting. Not to worry, it's just a sensation. If you wish to adjust your posture, go ahead and do so. Be kind to your body and just, Say to yourself, feeling, 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 or sensing, sensing, sensing. And then allow that sensation, that distraction to just load on by in the stream of your inhale and your exhale, rising with your inhale and falling with your exhale. Or maybe you're in a time right now where you're having some challenges emotionally and the tension internally is high and 
a strong feeling, a strong emotion wells up, bubbles up within the chest, rises in the throat. Maybe there's a feeling of anger, maybe there's a feeling of deep sadness, or maybe a feeling of grief or loss that you just can't shake. These are completely normal human feelings. And in this practice, we practice honoring these feelings for what they are. Feelings. You can say to yourself, sad, for example, sad, sad. Label the thought, the feeling, the emotion for what it is. Be as plain as possible, blunt as possible. Label the feeling that you have that runs through the mind, that comes up in the body. Or maybe the feeling is anger. Just say to yourself, angry, angry angry and just witness yourself in this moment by labeling that feeling that emotion for what it is anger sadness mania whatever it is and then just let it go with your exhale let it float on by Return to your breath. Return to your breath every time after you note what that sensation, what that feeling is. Because the purpose of this practice is to move through the emotions, move through the thoughts, move through the experience. Label it for what it is, whatever you see, sense, feel, hear, taste, touch during this practice. Be honest, tell the truth, label it for what it is. And then return to your breath. Rising as you inhale. and falling as you exhale. Nicely done, we're coming to the end of our seated breathing awareness practice. But keep your focus, keep your attention internally, attuned, aware, alert to the activity inside of you, your own truth, your own feelings, witness yourself during our practices today as we create art. Stay present with your breath, and as we work through the exercises today, know that if any feeling, any emotion, any sensation, any thought that may trigger you comes up, note it for what it is, witness yourself for what you're experiencing in that moment. And then release it with your breath, rising and falling. I invite you to take both palms, place them together at the center of your chest, begin to rub the palms together, generating a little bit of heat in between the palms. Begin to picture some bright, white, warm, healing light generating in between the palms. It's almost like electricity generating in between the palms. The palms are becoming warm, becoming hot, lighter and brighter, 
rub, 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 keep the palms together, rubbing them together, generating heat, generating warmth, generating light. Picture that light, picture that heat, picture that electricity in between the palms. Continue rubbing the palms together. We're waking ourselves up. We're coming back into our bodies. We're coming back into the room. We're coming back into our awareness of our surroundings. Rub, rub, rub. Allow the white light, the heat, the brightness to generate in between the palms. And stop, take both palms, place them over your heart. And say something to yourself that gives you a little bit of encouragement right now. Maybe I am safe or I am secure or I choose joy, I choose love. Send yourself a little message right now. And then when you're ready, take both palms together, rub them together, generating heat, generating white light, generating electricity in between the palms, rub, 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 rub them a little bit faster, generating more heat, generating more light, more electricity, rub, 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 rub the hands together faster. I know you've got it in you. And when your hands are burning, stop and place your hands in front of your device, your mobile device, your tablet, your mobile phone, your laptop, your smart TV, wherever you are right now, and just send some positive vibes, some big ups, some fist bumps, some uh, high fives, whatever. Send, up, send all that good energy to all your friends in the art world here today. Send it all to Daniel, too, for supporting us good vibes. Open the eyes. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to do a little bit of art today. <laughs> well done, everybody. Thank you so much for participating in that exercise. I hope you're feeling a little settled and ready to go. Um, so just to give a little bit of review as to what we were talking about in the past couple of sessions. Um, so we are talking about wellness recovery action planning. Um, this is an evidence-based technique that is used um, within uh, the mental health industry in order to help folks uh, plan their wellness, plan their success uh, in their lives. If you're going through a challenge um, that is mental health related, could be a crisis that you've gone to, perhaps you have been diagnosed um, with uh, a mental health challenge, maybe you're just struggling right now because of the pandemic, that is definitely a real thing. Maybe you've experienced grief, um, perhaps healing from trauma. This is a technique that has been used by psychotherapists, therapists, um, and peer counselors such as myself to help people feel equipped to take some self um, personal responsibility when it comes to um, um, uh, caring for their, themselves and just putting some plans in place in order to ensure that you are taken care of um, when you are having some challenges in your life. So we talked about uh, in the past couple of weeks first um, developing a daily maintenance plan. And so in that daily maintenance plan, we would include a list of every single thing, every single single item, every single person we need to see, every cat we need to hug, every um, behavior we need to complete in a single day, a 24-hour period in order to feel like ourselves, to feel well. If you have not been in those previous sessions, we're going to do that again. We're just going to take some time together just to refresh ourselves. Even the folks who have been here before, this is a great opportunity to just refresh yourself. I invite you to grab your journal, grab your sketchbook, grab a pen and we're just going to make some some um, some list right now and i invite you to just make a list of all of the things that 
make you feel good, that give you uh, a sense of joy, a sense of happiness, a list of things that you feel that you need to do every single day in order to feel fine, to feel balanced, to feel well, to feel human, whatever that means for you. For some folks that could mean, if I do not take my morning shower every day, do not talk to me. I am not a human being. I, my, I am not well. If I am not can, caring for myself in those particular ways, I am not well. So that could be something that goes on your daily maintenance plan. For other folks, it could mean um, if I am not spending two hours a day of playtime with the kids, I am not well, I am disconnected from my family. Those are things that you can add to your, your daily maintenance plan. Or for example, maybe if you're a spiritual person, if you're a religious person, it could be, if I don't pray five times a day, I am off. Things are not gonna go my way. I do not feel aligned if I do not get roll out my mat and connect with creator you know and other people too let's say if you come from an indigenous tradition um, um you know if i don't connect with creator connect with nature every day i am completely off kilter i have no I am not a human being. I should not be in relationship with anyone else because I will be projecting all of that onto somebody else. So make that list for yourself right now. What are those things that you would think, you know, if I, if I did not do this on a daily basis, I would not be okay. Um, make that list for yourself. Just jot it down, all of those things um, that make you feel well, that keep you well, that must be in your plan. They are non-negotiables on your day, on your best day to stay well, your optimal day. And let's say, for example, I, I want to acknowledge people who have a diversity of experience. If maybe you've not been well for quite some time, I can totally understand how it can be difficult to even begin to envision that. If you've been um, experiencing a major depressive episode for a long time, or post-traumatic stress, or just you're processing trauma, or anxiety, it can be really hard to just imagine being happy, or optimal, or optimally well, or joyful. So if that is your experience, that's okay too. We can build on that. If that's your experience, this is where we can start to use a little bit of creative imagination. What do you want it to be? What do you dream of doing on a day-to-day -day basis to make you feel well? Or what do you think is gonna, it's going to take for you to do every single day to get you to where you need to be in order to feel well. And for some folks, especially if you're coming off of, let's say, a long stint of a major depressive episode, um, for some people, it could just mean brushing your teeth, you know, like getting out of bed. It could mean talking to one person every single day. That is something that you can work towards. That is going to be your vision for your wellness. This is a part of your maintenance plan that you can begin to work towards in order to get you to where you need to be. And I wanted to just emphasize that because that's sort of the purpose of this program and why I started teaching um, wellness recovery action planning because a lot of times, especially for folks who are not doing well or they're going through some challenges and they're really struggling, when you're in it, when you have those glasses of on wellness, um, it's hard to envision that wellness for yourself. It's hard to break out of that that you know vision of of illness. So I, I wanted to help people um, come to a point where they can envision their wellness using um, tools to help generate that. So before we get into our practice of, of creating some visual art today, I know I wanted to have everyone at the end of this program have a completed art piece uh, that represents their vision of wellness. We're just going to jot down some things, you know, list them one by one, take some time and just 
go ahead right now if you haven't already started making a list for yourself. What do I have to do to feel well on a daily day to day basis? What needs to be on my plan in order to make sure that I'm balanced in every aspect of my life, socially, personally, financially, in my family, uh, any other way, hobbies, write it all down, list it, you know, just brain dump. Um, not, there are no wrong answers here. You know, you can filter it down, you can boil it down, simmer it down to a distilled list at a later time. Right now is just brainstorm, get it all out. You know, what do you want to have in your day to make you feel well? Maybe you're at a point in your life where, you know, the depression is really taking over and you haven't left your house. You just want to leave your house, you know, if you could just leave your house and just go to the park that's at the corner of your street, that would be amazing. That's a goal that you can work towards. That can be your vision for wellness. Write that down, write that down. Um, and we're going to go into an exercise in just an, a couple minutes where we'll flesh that out a little bit. So go ahead, write it down. If anyone wants to share, feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, this is a safe place and I'm here to foster, um, you know, a safe place as well and, and actively listen to those who have to share. So if you have any comments or things that you want to share that keep you well, feel free to drop it in the chat. So go ahead, write, write, write. Making your list of things that make you feel well. This is your daily maintenance plan. These are the items, the elements of your wellness. What does it mean for you? Could be drinking eight glasses of water a day. That hydration, it means so much to your overall wellness. Could mean sleeping exactly eight hours a night. If you don't get that amount of sleep, useless. I know I'm like that. If I don't get my like eight hours of sleep, if any less than that, seven and a half hours, forget it next day like don't talk to me at work <laughs> i'm gonna be hiding i'm gonna hide like at my desk <laughs> you know <laughs> only only communicating through email <laughs> i need to sleep and a lot of people are like that sleep is important it really can like balance you so put that down in your list eight hours of sleep you need to get it could be creating an art piece one art piece per week you know, just to de-stress, playing a board game, things that you love. Hey, Daniel, has anybody dropped? I think I see some comments coming into the chat. We do have a couple comments. First came in from um, Demi, and Demi said, leaving the house, going for a walk, uh, which are short goals for wellness. And totally. from Sherry, and Sherry said, shower, hydrate, fresh air, seeing another human in person definitely so important yeah i have one too and it came from when you were talking about when we were doing the meditation and you said say something nice to yourself and i said i trust you and it was trusting myself and it felt so good to say that so the first thing on my list was look in the mirror and tell yourself that you trust yourself <laughs> and that's yes i'm putting that on the list that's at the top Yes, do it. Yeah. Do affirmations. If you don't do your affirmations every day, where's your mindset at? You know, we had right? one, that's one, so important. We just had another one come in, and it's I'm not sure what the name is, Ahin Litzer, maybe, but breathing in and out and brushing your teeth. Yes, breathe. We need to breathe. We need oxygen to live. And you know what? So many of us aren't even breathing properly when you think about it, like our posture is horrible because we all sit at our desks like this or we're like this all day at our, on our phones. So like we don't even breathe. We don't open the shoulders and the chest and we don't breathe with the deep belly and the, you know, the Buddha, Buddha belly breath. Like we don't breathe. That's so important. That can change so much if we just deeply and then exhale. So important. I love that always good. I think I just saw a couple more. Yep. DE has said creating art or creating a nice meal. 
Yes. Cooking for yourself. That's important too. Making a nutritious meal. Self-care. That is self-care. Some boring self-care. A lot of people tend to think self-care is like buying bath bombs and going shopping and spending all this. Well, I mean, it can be self-care. I mean, whatever. If you have the disposable income to do so, do you. But um, boring self-care can just be like brushing your teeth, just um, breathing, you know, cooking yourself a nice meal so important so essential and that's wonderful perfect so everyone's doing great so take your list whatever you've listed down i want to have you flesh it out a little bit more so take that list and begin to craft sort of a picture an image of what your optimal day looks like you're going to craft it out into maybe a short story maybe just a quick journal ent entry that sort of lists your time um, over the day of what you spend your time on, who you meet. Use descriptive language. We want to create what we call in narrative therapy a thick description. We want to see, you know, exactly what it tastes like, what it feels like, what it smells like, what it hears like, what it's what it looks like to 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 feel well, to complete these activities that are on your list. So make it as descriptive as possible. You can create a little short story, jot it down really quickly, quick points, flesh it out. Um, just you can even do a mind map and just draw arrows, you know, of how does it feel to brush your teeth? What does that feel like when you brush your teeth every single day? What does that mean for you? Like when you run your tongue across your teeth afterwards and feel the minty freshness, what does that bring up for you? What does that um, cause you to think about? What thoughts come across your mind after you've completed that action on your list? What thoughts come across your mind after you've connected with creator, after you've done your fifth prayer for the day, or after you've cooked a, a great meal for yourself? What are the feelings? What are the emotions? What are the sensations? Um, think of all the five senses and just kind of do a little inventory of what you see, sense, feel, taste, touch, every other sense in, into it from all of those activities that you, you complete. So go ahead, we'll have a, well, a couple minutes of doing that. Just bring out the imagery from these activities. What does it look like? You know, flesh it out. If you were to create a drama out of these daily activities that you complete to make yourself feel well, what would it look like? What would your stage look like? How about the actors? How are they contributing to the production of this perfect day, of this optimal day, of this joyful day for yourself? And while you're writing that down, just give me one second. My uh, AC adapter just unplugged itself. So I'm just gonna pop that back into the wall so that I don't, my battery doesn't go on you. I've got full battery, but again, you know, just in case, one second. So continue writing, my voice is still here. Continue writing, expand on what your perfect day looks like see, sense, feel, taste, touch, every single one of those daily behaviors, daily things that make you feel well. If it's taking a shower every day, maybe twice a day, what does it smell like? What kind of shampoo are you using? What process do you take? Start from head to toe or do you go from toe to head? Really flush it out for yourself. And the reason for doing this exercise is not to, it, I promise I'm not being pedantic and trying to like 
pull out all of these unnecessary details for you. They really serve a purpose. But the reason for this is to create, and this is, and, and this is a, a strategy in, in transformation psychology, to create a sensory rich vision for what you want and desire or where you want to be. Because the more senses you activate, on this wellness recovery plan, the more you're going to be able to embody it, the more you're able to envision it and put it into play, the more you're going to be able to find ways to implement it into your day. So we're here to create a sensory rich experience for ourselves so that we know what to look forward to. It's not going to feel so far away from us. It's not going to feel like it's this unattainable dream. So we use words, we use our language, we use our imagination to create that thick description, that 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 deep multi-dimensional experience within our minds. Because as soon as we create that within our minds and we make that connection, it's gonna be so much easier to embody it. You can move from there and then build from there. So you're doing great. Continue on making that sensory, rich, thick description. You're gonna need that as we move on to start to create our art pieces. I'll give you about 30 more seconds. And as you're doing that, continue to think about what's coming up for you. Think about colors, think about shapes, think about um, textures, think about movement and motion, think about dimension. Really just automatically associate. You know, let, let the words come from your mind in association to each word, because those words are going to inspire what we put visually into our art pieces. So pull out those nice juicy words, those words that your intuition draws you to. <laughs> I'm actually just sitting in my workshop here. I'm sitting on the floor whenever I uh, actually do my work. I do all my painting on the floor, or most of my painting on the floor. <laughs> I like to sit on the floor. I don't know what it is. It's like this grounded feeling. I sit from the floor. Maybe it's because I'm a yogi. <laughs> I sit and teach from the floor. All right, perfect. Put your pens down. I encourage you to grab your visual art. Uh, materials, just get them ready wherever you are. Get them primed and ready. Maybe you've got a paintbrush, maybe you need some water, you might want to grab some of that just to rinse off paint brushes. Maybe you've got some paints. Prep those, get them all set up. Our next task, our next exercise is quite simple. We're going to take everything that we sensed, that we feel, that felt, felt that we um, generated, that we ideated just now in the past 10 minutes of just visualizing our perfect day. And we're going to create that visually as an art piece. Take this as full creative license. You're mission here today really is to create a piece of visual art that represents that vision that you just described for yourself. Take all of the colors, the feelings, the textures, the thoughts, the sensations, the ideas, the story, the timelines, and create that onto a visual art piece. I myself, um, in my studio here, I have got a piece, I've got a board here, I've got a, I've just got like stocks and stocks of um, painting panels, but I uh, pre prepped this one before this class so that I could paint along with you. Um, but um, we're, we're going to dive right in. So I invite you to do that. I've made a list for myself of some things that I like to put in my daily maintenance plan. So I'll certainly talk about that as I go along. But 
let's go dive right in grab your paint brushes grab your materials or if you don't have any paints or anything like that or visual materials today that's perfectly fine take your journal use your journal grab a piece of printer paper and you can do some sketches or maybe you can um you know just do some drawing that's totally cool as well or maybe you don't feel like doing an art piece, a visual art piece today you just feel like writing that's absolutely fine um you know i i don't want to pigeonhole people um the really the, the uh, essence of the exercise is still the same we're just trying to make our daily maintenance plan come to life in an art piece so that you can keep it with you so wherever you are whenever you look at it it's going to bring up those feelings those sensations those thoughts those prompts that that really move you towards that vision that you've created for yourself of what your goal is in terms of your mental health journey so i'm going to begin to um so what i had on my list of my daily maintenance maintenance plan. So I've got so working a certain number of hours per day working on my personal businesses, I have to create a certain number of art artworks per day just to meet a production quota, you know, meetings. Uh, and then I have like personal hygiene items, me taking medication, you know, showering, I have um, creating music, um, visual art, that's a part of my um, personal wellness plan. Um, meeting with friends and family, that's also really important to me. Building relationships is really important to me. I find that if I'm starting to isolate or I'm not calling people back as quickly as possible, then that means I'm starting to, um, you know, my, maybe my, my, my mental health is starting to take a hit. So those are some of the things that are on my list. Some of the sensations and feelings that came up for me um I, like the colors the color blue came up for me a lot the color blue liquid water streams rivers um you know those are the kinds of things that really came up for me in terms of images and imagery when i was thinking about my daily maintenance plan lots of water lakes i put like lake I just did, did like a, a mind map of just things, a free association of things that really remind me of what I need in order to stay well. Um, like staying in nature, that's another thing. Going in nature is another thing for me. I love going to the water. Um, for me, especially in the summertime, going to Port Credit and just like sitting by the lake on the rocks, like favorite thing. You like couldn't be happier. And in the summertime, you know, I love to do that. So if that's not in my day to day plan or my weekly plan, um, I, I'm not I'm not good. <laughs> so I'm gonna start transferring that into a conceptual art piece. Um, I invite you all to be as creative in your own special and unique way. Um, feel free so if anyone would like to share um, while we're creating together feel free to drop a message in the chat or if you want to come on camera or unmute yourself feel free this is our open practice period to really start um, embodying to really start um, fleshing out um, our daily maintenance plan and, and things that make us feel well uh, and maintain our wellness onto our our art piece onto our canvas, making it a reality. So let's begin. I'm going to grab some blue. As I had mentioned, here's my gigantic jug of blue acrylic paint. <laughs> now, I've already primed my surface with some gesso. This is probably one of my favorite things to do actually when creating art, just priming surfaces because it takes a lot of sanding, a lot of layers of painting, and I find the sanding to be quite therapeutic and just running your hands over the smoothness of the gesso board once you've completed that it's just it's very satisfying I like that feeling i'm a very tactile person and that just comes with being someone who is visually and hearing impaired so i like to touch things a lot um but yeah I, I love priming and sanding my surfaces so let's see what kind of blue am i gonna use here 
So feel free to pop on camera, show what you're doing, talk about what you're doing. I'll have Daniel read out any comments that were dropped. If you have any questions, feel free to put those in there as well. We actually just got a question from Sherry asking how long we have to create because they're wondering if we have time to put a base layer onto our canvas. Ah, yes. So we have until 2.30 um, to create, but you are more than welcome to continue onwards um, and complete afterwards. But our session is going to go until 2.30 today. Maybe I'll, I'll take a chance to share uh, the story I wrote and then how I'm starting to reflect that in the artwork, the visual art. And so the story I said, wake up well rested. I feel that like anything less than seven hours and I'm, I'm just not not really <laughs> going to be, be as functional as I want to be. So wake up well rested. I do a nice stretch and wake up my body and I feel the soft carpet underneath my feet when I stand up. I put clothes on that feel comfortable, which are soft and flowy and let me move. And I don't rush into the day or distractions. I stay quiet as long as I can. I pour some tall glasses of water and drink them. And again, I don't rush through it. I'd be thankful for the moment and the day and the opportunities and the challenges. I step outside and I get some nice deep breaths of air and I walk to the water, the wide open waters, the sounds of the waves crashing and the birds chirping and I see the seagulls and the ducks and sometimes the swans all hanging out. And if I'm really lucky, the sun warms my bones and I get to bury my feet in the sand somewhere. So that was my story. And then- I Wow. I had a, some old canvases that I just picked up from my parents' house with paint on them. I thought I'm going to, you know, just kind of cover these and like no need to get new ones if I have these old ones that are just sitting in the basement. Yeah. So I put yeah. a bunch of paint on it, but now I'm working with a marker. And I started with like, a, a, it's kind of like a picture of my head here, or is like a, so this was like me in the center. And then I drew a sun in the corner and some waves kind of in the other corner. Oh, then, cool. I drew some like concentric kind of circles to represent the silence and like staying for me I'm very like geometric kind of like you can see some of like the artwork behind me and stuff but um so the circles are helping to represent silence and staying inside and then I put a nice eye in the middle so I'm going to keep working on it but the idea of sun and water like you like you're saying Tanisha and then this quietude and silence, um, I, I like that as well. So that's the direction I'm going. <laughs> that's amazing, that's gorgeous. Thank you. That's gorgeous. Anybody else, what y'all doing? <laughs> Everyone's hiding their pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas, feel free to share. And if you like, you can put some music on wherever you are. Generally I would, but I don't want to choose music for some folks because not everyone likes my music. <laughs> yeah, I've got some blue here on my canvas. So I'm just going to do a little abstract painting. And again, if, is, if anyone has any questions from earlier on about the exercise, the breathing exercise that we completed, feel free to drop that in the chat. We can talk more about that. The process of wellness recovery action planning is used quite um, often by therapists, counselors, psychotherapists, social workers. It's generally the industry standard you'll find. And they begin the process with just envisioning our best day, what our goals are, what we think our goals would be if we can't envision it just yet. And then afterwards, we come up with a daily maintenance plan of how we can organize these activities and behaviors so that we know exactly what to do, what to look forward to, so that we're not at a loss, that we don't catch ourselves idle. 
and make sure that we implement those activities into our day, scheduling them into our day, planning them into our days and weeks. And of course, within our action planning, our recovery and wellness planning, we also make provisions, as we talked about last month, for times when we don't feel so great and we don't feel so hot. We make plans and we put them in place for those times when we don't feel human and maybe we need some uh, someone else to step in for us and take over some tasks that we don't have the capacity to work with and so that goes in our plan which partners or supporters supporters do we have in our lives that we can call on to maybe step in maybe check the mail for us because we're having some difficulty going outside um, because maybe the depression is sinking in um, or maybe you have a little social anxiety and you just can't make it out to the grocery store one, you know, one weekend. That's totally a real thing for some people, you know, especially during the pandemic, you know, it's brought out a lot of agoraphobia, social anxiety, because now people are considered like biohazards, you know, like literally, <laughs> if you're not wearing a mask, some people, if they don't see other people wearing a mask and they're approaching them, it makes them super uneasy too. And then like, it's, it's an issue for some people. So if that's your reality, you know, we'll have to start working with that and making provisions for ourselves so that we can make sure that our needs are met. So if that is your, your situation, you know, like not feeling up for going to the grocery store because you're a little anxious about social interaction or being out again after having been in your house for a year and a half, total normal reaction to social isolation. Perhaps there's a friend you can engage to pick up your groceries for you. So that would go in your, your recovery planning, making provisions, engaging that person, saying, hey, you know, when I'm feeling this way, I need some support with getting my mail, getting my groceries. So that would also go into your plan. And maybe if you want to incorporate that in your daily, in your art piece, you can put a picture of a friend, <laughs> you know, they're your support person. Maybe you have an animal, a service animal. You need to have them by you whenever you're out and about. That also goes in your wellness and recovery plan. I need to have my emotional support cat with me everywhere I go. And another important part of recovery planning and wellness planning is knowing and being aware of your triggers. What are triggers? Triggers are those events or perceived events, histories, present and past that cause upsetting emotions for us that cause distress and being aware of those things and what they are and making a list of them, incorporating them into your wellness plan makes all the difference in your recovery. Because once you're aware of what your triggers are, you know how to respond. You can go into your wellness toolbox and look at the things that make you feel well and use them as an antidote for the triggers that you are experiencing. For example, if you are experiencing social anxiety and you're triggered by a large crowd that happened to come your way, you know, 
and maybe a panic attack comes on you. You can prepare ahead of time by knowing that maybe you can use something to calm yourself in that moment. Maybe it's a breathing exercise, square breath, four, four breathing, or a meditation practice. So that's gonna go in your wellness plan. That's going in your recovery planning. The key to success in planning our wellness is identify those emotions, those feelings, those experiences within you and give true It looks like we've lost Tanisha. Sometimes these things happen. Maybe the computer died or lost the signal or something. Oh, we're back. You're muted though. You're muted, so we can't hear you yet. There we go. <laughs> back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> So be as creative as possible. There are no rules. There's nothing good or bad or wrong about what you're doing. No judgment. Do not judge yourself in this activity. I know as artists, that's super hard to overcome, but that is also something to practice. You can say to yourself, Every mark I make is beautiful. This is your affirmation. <laughs> I actually had to do something similar to that when I started painting. Because I was afraid to even just make one brush stroke. I was like, ah, <laughs> I'm afraid of it all looking wrong. <laughs> but it takes time to let that go. I'll show you what I'm doing. I've got kind of a oops, textured blue background here. Reminds me of the water. Water and sand. That's what I'd like. That's where I want to be by the water and sand. So I just wanna check in on everybody to see how you're doing. If there are any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and Daniel will read them out. Or if you wanna share what you're working on right now, feel free. The floor is yours. Just cleaning my brush off here. We did have a message from Sherry who said, 
not ready to share yet, but they finally got started. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> Starting is the best step, <laughs> I've heard it said. Ooh. Trying not to get paint on one hand. I should just take my ring off. I should, that would be smart, right? <laughs> Try not to get it on my ring, but who am I fooling? <laughs> who am I fooling? This is art. And if there's anything from the earlier practice that we did today that you found beneficial, feel free to drop that in the chat as well too. I hope it was beneficial for you, maybe something that you can use yourself if you ever encounter a period where you're just um, having a difficult time. Um, meditation is a personal practice of mine. Um, it's just a part of my own personal spirituality, but again, like, itself is really it's not like a religious thing it's really just about bringing awareness to your thoughts and your body and the feelings and where all of these things are taking place in your body and and witnessing yourself um, witnessing yourself hearing yourself and telling the truth about what you're feeling sometimes these are things that we're really missing in our day-to-day -day lives and so Meditation has really helped me to create that connection between mind and body and awareness. And it's been a huge contributing factor to my overall journey, my own overall mental health journey. And I love to teach it. So it's a pleasure for me to share. I hope you find it useful. If you're into yoga, that's another thing that um, is something you can add to your wellness toolbox. Moving your body, mindfully moving your body. That's a great practice to have. Tai Chi, Qigong. Any other kind of martial art. I have a friend who is i can't remember the name of the the martial art it is a japanese martial art and they use a specific type of sword and it's such a beautiful practice it's not meant to be competitive than that you fight against someone it's more of just a beautiful art performance mindful mind body type of art form and it's just so beautiful like to see the, the mind connection to the implement used, the sword and all of the symbolism. It's a very beautiful thing to see. So whatever that is for you, I mean, perhaps that is something you should be considering as a tool that you can implement in your day-to-day -day life. to keep yourself balanced and, and healthy. I mean, it's a great practice to keep, keep the body moving and breathing. These practices promote proper breathing. As I said earlier, most humans aren't breathing properly when they're walking around this earth because you know, we all have desk jobs these days, or most of us have desk jobs, or and we sit, you know, crunched over on our keyboards or hunched over our mobile phones. No, but humans are meant to be standing up straight and tall so that they can breathe effectively. So all of these activities, they promote good breath, good oxygen exchange, mindful awareness.
gonna let that dry. Maybe I should turn on my fan. I have like three fans in my studio that I use to just um, dry the acrylic paint faster because sometimes it's just taking forever. I do all of my acrylic painting, my big paintings in the summertime because I don't have the space for it inside of my house, but I can do it in the garage in the summer. <laughs> The one you see behind me is one that I just finished. Um, I just got it stretched and um, it finally arrived a couple of weeks ago. I was so happy with it. I just put two coats of varnish, still needs more. I feel like it took more time to varnish it than to actually paint it. <laughs> but um, it's an art piece that I created with my mobility cane. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm visually impaired. And so I use a cane when I'm walking, a white cane. And I've started actually painting with my white cane <laughs> just to try something new. And I've come up with a couple of pieces um, that I really like, that I really enjoy. And this is one of them um, that just came back from the shop from getting stretched. This is just a, a part of it. It's actually quite large. It's in the frame, you only see a little part of it, but it's actually, 72 inches by 140 inches. Yeah, something like that. It's quite large. It's very wide. Um, I'm still finding or looking for a place to hang it. <laughs> right now, it's just sitting in my garage. So if anybody has a wall <laughs> that or a corridor that you would like to fill, please contact border crossings, no, I'm <laughs> I remember you asked me for a, uh, a two o'clock warning and I missed that by a long shot. It's now 2.21, so. Oh, okay, <laughs> no worries, <laughs> no worries. Here, here's what I got so far right now. I'm a, I tend to be a color field painter, meaning that the subject of a lot of my paintings is color itself and texture and the way they interplay. And so I'm just gonna keep going and putting more dimensions onto this painting. So just a couple more minutes and then we'll do sort of like a cool down practice. Um, you can take what you're doing, what you've started today and continue on into the afternoon and, and bring it back to the next session in August. August 14th is our next session at one o'clock. And we're gonna actually continue on working on what we're doing today. So don't feel pressured to like rush, 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 you know, get it all done today. You can actually work on this today, throughout the day, in between our sessions. And on August 14th, we're gonna have some time um, to work on our pieces. Um, on August 14th, I'm gonna be broadcasting live with you from Artscape Gibraltar. I'm gonna be doing an art uh, residency for two weeks. So I'm gonna be on Toronto Island. The next time you see me, the next time we paint together, maybe, um, maybe you can see something that I have in the works during my residency at that time. Um, but yeah, that's where I'll be. Um, but same program, Visions of Wellness, we'll be working on the pieces that we've begun today um, just to help us flesh out our vision, our hopes, our dreams for moving forward in our mental health journey. So whatever you're doing right now, I encourage you to just finish up the last few brush strokes, maybe last few scrapes, maybe you wanna tidy up, maybe just, ooh, I'm gonna just wash a little paint off my hands here. Tidy up. And once you've tidied up and finished up, I invite you to come into a comfortable seated position wherever you are, just like you were earlier today. Maybe you want to recline a little bit. Maybe that art piece took a little bit out of you emotionally, spiritually, <laughs> physically. Maybe you're in your garage like me throwing around paint, who knows? <laughs> um, come to the stillness, come to presence wherever you are. As we're wrapping up.
and just place the artwork aside, showing respect for what you've just expressed. This is your truth. This is a message. This is something that your internal world is communicating to you. And this is a sacred piece of artwork for yourself to remind you of where you're going, your goals for wellness. It's a sign of your joy, a sign of happiness, a sign of your recovery. I invite you to close the eyes, withdraw your awareness from the world around you, see, sense, feel, taste, touch. All of your senses are now internal and attuned to your inner world, the inner play. Focusing on your breath, bringing the awareness to the inhale and the exhale, the rising and the falling of the abdomen and chest. As you inhale, say to yourself, rising, And as you exhale, falling, rising, falling, everyone's doing great. Bringing your awareness, bringing your attention to the rising and the falling of the abdomen and the chest as you inhale and exhale. And take a moment to thank yourself for expressing truth about your feelings, about how you are right now. Express thanks to yourself for witnessing your experience as completely valid. Focusing on the rising and the falling of the abdomen and chest. Continue to thank yourself for what you've communicated through your art form and know that all that you've created today is good, is beautiful, is worthy and useful to your awareness and to your recovery and wellness. Inhaling deeply, exhaling completely. And as you're breathing with mindful awareness, Scan your body for any sensations, any feelings, and e any emotions. And if you find yourself falling upon a particular part of the body, 
an emotion, a sensation. Breathe into that part of the body using your breath, using your awareness, and allow that area to soften and release. Nicely done. Take both palms together at the center of your chest. Begin to rub the palms together, generating heat, visualizing white, bright light in between the palms, warm, hot electricity. Rubbing the palms together. Rub, rub, rub. We're starting to wake ourselves up from this breathing awareness, this meditative practice. Take both palms, place them over the heart. Send a kind message to yourself, something that you need to hear right now. Maybe it's a thank you. Maybe it's a good job. Maybe it's a I love you. Maybe it's I forgive you. I, I think I, I don't know, whatever that message is for you. And bring the palms together one more time. Rub, 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 generating heat, generating electricity, white light. You can envision in between the palms, rub, 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 rub. Faster and faster. And if you can rub the palms together even faster, do so right now. Give it all you've got. And stop, bring the palms in front of your device, in front of your mobile phone, in front of your laptop, your iPad, whatever you've got. And send some healing vibes, some good vibes, some big ups, some fist bumps, some thumbs up, peace signs to everybody in the virtual room today, to Daniel for supporting us, to the AGM, to the Border Crossings Project team, to everybody in the background and behind the scenes who works at the office to make these kinds of workshops possible. Send a thank you and lots of love to everybody who's been here today to experience this Visions of Wellness program. Thank you so much, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here during this class. I hope you found some benefits, some enjoyment. I'm sure there's gonna be some surveys that you can fill out to provide some feedback. If you have any questions from today's session, I'll be glad to take them right now. Um, Daniel, are there any, any questions coming in into the chat? Yeah, we do have some. Uh, so in order, um, Demi says thank you and wishes peace. And Shulamit uh, wants to share their screen so they can share their piece because it's oh you know, yeah yeah vision yeah and for sure Sherry, Sherry also offers her gratitude uh, to Tanisha and, and myself as well so Shulamit do uh, do you want to share your screen yeah awesome I'm gonna get closer so I can see. Oh, is it beautiful. Working? So it started with the heart and I wanted the warmth and I wanted orange, but this didn't quite work. So I cut it out and I had a back, black background, but that wasn't right. And so this is the conclusion. Ah. And I thought it was very uh, warm and it went with the final hand rubbing and then putting it on your heart and then sharing it outward. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for the whole session. It was very, very meaningful. Thank you so much for your feedback and attending. Anyone else? Anyone else want to share? I think we still have time. We've got another message from Pilar who says, thank you, Tanisha and Daniel. Another awesome workshop. My watercolors are drying and awaiting another layer. Oh, awesome. Fantastic, Pilar. Welcome back. And next session, we'll have some time to work on it too. So maybe we can see what you've, you've been working on. 
I, uh, I progressed mine a little bit. I, I was really just wanted to do like, I, one of the thing was stretching. And so I just put lines, like stretching lines. And I want to go back with like different rainbow kind of colors and fill out like the different bands of the piece and then maybe some solid block colors. So it, it's a really intuitive process and just see what happens. And I did this other one that says smile on it. And I like to work some more shapes and things into it. And because smiling is just part of the, the wellness for me too. If I don't smile in a day, then something's something's not um you know if i can at least find one moment to, to smile there is a question from sherry i'm used to thinking and presenting in a linear way any suggestions on how to move away from a linear way of thinking when creating art hmm. what do you mean by linear way of thinking when you create art i'm just curious to know what that means for you um well for me it's just very I could show what I came up with, but it's a very, it's step by step by step. So everything is kind of boxed, um, like placed on the canvas in a step by step mythological kind of way. Okay. So mm -hmm. is it like when you're creating a piece, you sort of like plan it out yeah. to begin with and then, you know, like step by step, you sort of break it down from there. Okay. Um, I mean, like that's, that's totally fine too. I mean, if that's your preferred way or like if you if that's your strength that's your preferred way that's totally fine as well I mean some people are just like that they tend to be more methodical than intuitive when it comes to their painting or, or their artwork but if you do want to sort of branch out and be more intuitive in terms of the art pieces or creating I can certainly recommend doing work with the five senses um, that's where the majority of our, our intuition, you know, comes from we're receiving information from the world around us and also doing work with just the thoughts and intuition that comes from the gut. So um, like if you, I'm not sure if you've ever done like automatic writing or automatic journaling, um, that's a really good practice to really just start working and, and creating and expressing without judging or without pre-planning and just allowing things to come to mind as they do organically. Um, and that could be as simple as just sitting down with an open open journal, setting a timer and just, you know, saying, I'm going to write, keeping the pen moving no matter what, doesn't matter what word comes out, no judging, no filtering, none of that for five minutes and then just see what happens. Um, and just and just follow through with that. It's just really a matter of keeping the pen moving or you can do the same thing with a canvas, you know, set a timer, get a paintbrush, pick a color and just move the brush and just even close your eyes and just allow your hands to just move and make gestures and play. It's really about, um, I guess, working with play um, in the research that I've done with um, in intuitive artwork, um, there's a lot of talk about the theme of play and making making your work very childlike in a way, intentionally. And if you watch kids play, they're very much like that. When they when they draw or when they play, they don't really judge. They don't think about like they're not you know they're, they're not like adults who are just like, well, no, why don't you put this here? Why don't you do that? Or this looks better. They know they just they just do and they, they don't question things. And so um, I would definitely recommend working with um, like automatic journaling, automatic painting, just to like practice that intuitive guidance instead of like doing the, from like going from brain to hand instead of like, you know, I think that's maybe that's what you're discussing, like what you're, yeah. you're thinking about, like going from your, your approach tends to be moving from brain to hand instead of mm -hmm. hand to brain, kind mm -hmm. of. <laughs> yes. So, so yeah, like practicing those kinds of intuitive um, exercises, like will really help. Um, I think. Those are great suggestions. Thank you. No problem. We did have just one more comment in the chat saying from Demi, who's no longer in the room with us. Thank you. See you next session in August. Very inspiring. Awesome. Does anybody want to uh, share their, their work? I like to take a screenshot of anything that was produced during the session. If anybody wants to turn their camera on and, and take a shot, um, now would be the time to do it, but oh, no pressure. Picture time. Yeah.
Let me pick up my piece here. I'll hold one, one of mine up too. Well, let me get the screenshot ready. Okay. Right. Anybody else coming? Might just be me and you, Tanisha. All right. Oh, here we okay. go. Oh, thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Three, two, one. Awesome. I got like the smile in front of my. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Love seeing that Pilar. Thank you so much for for sharing that with us. I love seeing the colors and the like. The bands of just the colors and rainbows is like a similar thing I was imagining for like when I was showing just the lines on the piece I was doing. That's like very similar to what I was imagining. That's yeah. That made me laugh. And also the question about linear because mine are all lines. So I thought that was an interesting question too. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. All of your work is so beautiful. Like, I'm so impressed. Good job, everyone. Is, is that it? Are we, are we done for the day? I guess we're done. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Shulami, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for sharing and contributing to the conversation and being a part of it. It's. Uh, we all inspire each other. Okay. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for coming. See you next time. <laughs>